welcome back to the Falcon 64 project. Today's video is going to be on uh, removing everything out of the front end of the Falcon today. Um, I'm going to start on the driver's side and go through all that. We're going to see how far we can get. It probably will make up possibly two videos. Maybe I'll get all one in depending on how uh, everything goes. If it doesn't fight with me. Like I said on the last video, I've been uh, spraying everything down with PV Blaster for probably the last two weeks and uh, trying to keep that soaked so hopefully we don't have run into any major problems. Um, in the last video I removed the uh, passenger side uh, spring and on the driver's side I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to work from the bottom up and see how that works out. Anyways, let's uh, let me show you what's going on. So like I said, the driver's side is as it should be. I haven't touched it other than I have unbolted the front struts. So as you can see there and there, those are un all unbolted on the front, but need to be unbolted from the lower control arm. Um, just trying to give everybody a good picture of what's going on down here as far as steering goes. So if you bought a car or something that is uh, all torn apart, maybe it'll be a reference to how it should go. At least it will be for me when I come back and put everything back in, because it'll be a little bit of time. I gotta, uh, once I get everything out, I need to clean it all and I need to sand it all and I am going to paint it all before I start installing the new. Anyways. Um, let me get my tool set up and we're going to start on this uh, this driver's side and uh, we'll go from there. I'll bring you back here in a minute. Alright everyone, I got everything set up here. I got my ball joint uh, fork, got this from Harbor Freight, 9 bucks on sale for like 6 bucks. And then um, my... Uh, the tie rod separator. Anyways, I'm gonna start off here removing the dust cap and getting this hub off and just try to go from from inside to out. So let me sit you there. Here I'm just working around the cap. Put my gloves on because you know how grease is. On your finger. I'll have it everywhere. So nice thing about this being a V8 car, you can find kits pretty easily for front disc brakes, and I will be doing that. Since I am on a tight, tight budget on this car, I am probably going to. Um, I know a bunch of people are going to talk smack about it but I am probably going to go with eBay because you can buy a whole front end brake kit minus the uh, minus the uh, new uh, master cylinder for about know, about 500 bucks five six hundred bucks and they seem to have pretty good reviews when I get closer, I will post it on one of the uh, Falcon Facebook groups just to see if anybody has had any experiences with it and that are good. You know, you always kind of get mixed reviews. People do not like eBay stuff, that's for sure. I get it. I get it for sure. But, you know, I ended up picking up a... Uh, I ended up picking up my cow from eBay. That wasn't too bad. So right there we got the cotter pin I'm working on and then you got the nut and then this whole hub should come right off and you'll have your inner bearing or your outer bearing here that should pop right out and then your 
outer bearing, the biggest one, will be on the inside of the hub with a seal. It was easy, nobody wanted to do it. A lot of times I look at this as a puzzle. There we go, cut her pins out. Sometimes you can screw that off with that. There's just a nut keeper. And then we got the nut. And again, that just spins right off. Keeping that in there is just a little bit of dirt and grime in the threads. Just needs a little extra help. Alright, I'm gonna go get a wrench. I'll be right back. Alright, so this was an inch and an eighth. So nut, keeper, and then cotter. And now the drum. Bearing. Bearing looks in good shape. Of course I'll have new. Put that down here. Front brakes are in good shape. Drum. Ridges on my uh, spindle. No, everything feels good, so I'll be able to reuse that spindle. Um, boy, everything in here for the brakes looks brand new, so uh, that's a good thing. So now I'm gonna be working on getting the backing plate off, and of course. Uh, undoing the hose for the brake line and just pulling this off as a whole. I don't need to separate it. This ain't gonna be used again. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go back with the, uh, I hope you can see. I'm gonna go back with the uh, new front disc brakes. bring you in here so yeah like I said everything looks pretty new look at these springs uh, the guy that had it before me must have had this done didn't use it too much before uh, parking it so anyways I got on the back side these four um, that I need to undo and of course I need to do the brake line off of that so I'll get on that and I'll bring you back then so here is the brake line. You see the bleeder. This is where the brake line goes in. These have been replaced. So I'm gonna undo it here and then work on the backing plate, which is back there where my fingers are pointing. There's four of them. Um, again, I hit those PB blaster. I've been hitting them for a while. Once we get the backing plate and the drum off, then I'll start working on the tie rod ends and breaking it down that way. I'll bring you back once I get the uh, the mask or the brake line off and the uh, backing plate. So for me, it was easier 
And I don't know if it's just because the way they did these lines, just to disconnect this one here and disconnect the line for that. So that's what I'm doing. And then I can bust it loose there, spin it, it'll be all good. These aren't on a swivel for some reason. Anyways, just wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, so uh, these are just 9 sixteenths. Um, they were so tight that I couldn't sit there and get the uh, impact wrench, but I was able to easily get them by, um, by the socket. So I'll get that off and I'll bring you back with that off. So I got all the bolts off. I just want to bring up a good point here that when you put the back, put the backing plate back on, you'll have one long bolt out of them and it's the one that goes to your tie rod in there. So just so you know, now they're all pull off. And I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, re-bolt that. So that's the spindle. Everything's right there. Um, now I can start getting to these bolts real easy and everything else. I'll bring you back here in a couple minutes when I, uh, get this all bolted back together. I just tried to keep the bolts together and um, I'll start working on these uh, tie rod ends and uh, all those bolts. So again, these are all locked in with a cotter pin. You gotta undo the cotter pin and then undo the nut and then you'll need one of these uh, tie rod forks to split them. So I'm gonna start working on that and I'll bring you back here in a little bit. All right, so I got um, the cotter pin out and the bolt off. That took about 30, 40 minutes. That cotter pin gave me a run for my money. Now I'm fighting the same thing over here. Just getting it out is whew, a nightmare, but you know, it's been sitting here probably, it looks like it's never been changed out. So they probably 50 years of dirt and grime and cotter pin sitting in there and getting all stuck. So. Anyways, uh, it's just tedious fighting with the cotter pin. Once you get that out, uh, that tie rod end came right off with the uh, Harbor Freight tie rod uh, fork. And uh, that wasn't an issue. So that's where I'm at. I'm working on this one. Uh, before I take that one out, I'll probably try to remove this uh, strut rod and uh, at least get that loosened up and then work on this one and then work on the, the back one there and uh, get that going. I'll bring you back here in a little bit and show you my progress. All right, just bring you back. So I got the uh, ball joint bolts undone, um, did the uh, cotter pins, still pain in the butt, but that's where we're at. I also undid the uh, Stabilizer bar? Is that stabilizer? Anyways, undid this. So the only thing it's holding up is that and the strut rod's gone. So that's where we're at and now I'm going to use the Harbor Freight ball joint to pull these apart. So uh, let me sit you up here so you can see that.
So here we got the spindle off. As we can see, can you tell where, uh, I don't know if y'all could see that. At one point we did have a bud bearing up here, but it didn't scar where the races are. I'll just lightly sand those. Um, for these spindles, um, I'm just going to uh, obviously throw them in the uh, bead blaster and uh, clean them up. I might powder coat those. I probably will powder coat the struts. And uh, I mean, all that stuff, as long as I could fit it in the oven, it would not be difficult to throw it in there, clean it all up, hit it wire, with a wire brush first, clean it all up, throw it in there, clean it up more, and then uh, powder coat it. I might do black or I might go back to the burgundy. Um, I could even do chrome. Anyways, probably not on the spindles, probably do black. Maybe chrome on the struts, but that'll be another video. So uh, now I'm gonna start working on this bolt here so I can get lower control arm. And then I will work on um, removing the upper control arm. Might be a little difficult. Probably shot myself in the foot with uh, not having it together so I can at least undone these two bolts. I should be able to get in there with a wrench. Hopefully they're not too froze up. I've been looking at uh, rebuilding the upper control arms just to save a little money you can obviously new ball joints and then uh you can do the whole upper part there uh, i'm looking at getting the roller bearing um spring perches from um oh i forget the name of them but anyways uh looking at that and of course new springs i'm gonna try to redo everything it might not be new but it might be rebuilt and uh just so i can uh you know have a whole new front end and at a reasonable price is where i'm at uh you know you start spending money it starts adding up quickly this that that i was at two grand uh, doing the the same people i was going to get the uh, spring purchase from and uh it just starts to add up so i think what i must do is try to break it down as long as everything can come apart good like i can get all the ball joints out of the upper control arms, get all this tore apart. And then that way I could sit there and uh, powder coat those, clean them all up, powder coat them, and rebuild them. And then uh, obviously new springs. The only reason I'm replacing springs is because, hell, they're 50 something years old. Obviously new shocks, those are like 200 bucks. So anyways, uh, as you know, if you ever done a car like this, or uh, just even fixing one for, you know, whatever the front end it starts to add up and so but anyways i'll bring you back uh, like i said i'm gonna start working on the lower control arm and then i'm gonna start working on the upper and save the tie rods and all that for a little bit uh, i'll bring you back here in a little bit okay this is where i'm at i got the shock out that was a little bit of a pain in the butt but with a swivel i was able to get that undone now I'm going to drop my spring compressor in, relief the pressure off of it, and then I'm just going to pull the uh, upper control arm out and uh, see how that works. Uh, a little differently than I did the other side, and uh, that way I can get to these bolts easier with it all out. Shouldn't be a big deal since I don't have anything it's pushing down on, and it uh, should be pretty easy. But I'll bring you back and show you installing the uh, spring compressor and then the removal of the upper control arm. And that will end today's video. So uh, I'll bring you right back. So here's the uh, spring compressor. Just undo the, where it uh, ties into the spring perch. Bring it up underneath here for this part. Obviously, this one goes right here. Get 
this one tight, that way I can easily do the other one. It won't be flopping around on me. Pretty sure if I remember correctly, I think so. So So the bottom of it's all nice and tight. Now we're gonna grab our shock mount. So I'm gonna get this right at it. So all I'm doing is taking the little slide bolt, putting it in. I'm just putting one in. Locking it in, it down, push that over. And just threading this back into place. I'm not going super tight with it. Just holding it there. Here, taking my washer, down, taking my bearing, down. And then I'll turn this down. All right, let me pause you, let me get the uh, pliers, and here we go. And all we're gonna do is tighten it up. Again, it's very light, nothing crazy. Up. I can see it's already up off the frame. So now I'm just going to redo, remove those bolts. Uh, 
looks like three quarters. Yes, it is. Is the impact gun. A note here on this this upper control arm don't use an impact wrench to uh, undo those um, I had one of them come off perfectly the other one got tied up at the last couple threads I couldn't uh, tighten it back up I couldn't loosen it so I ended up having to take the cutoff wheel to that nut to get it off um, only had to go like three quarters away and then Put the wrench on it and it popped right out so now all i gotta do nope upper control arm is loose and all i should have to do is loosen the uh spring compressor let me uh take a hammer pop those through a little bit more Stay on the safe side. All right, so that's loose. It should be out. Now all I should have to do. Is loosen my spring compressor. should be off the spring, I believe. Just holding this up. So again, Oh, 
that comes up. And spring and everything comes out the bottom. Spring isolator. Here are the shelves. You can tell this has never had the Shelby drop done on it. Um, for that, you'd have to move them down an inch. That is my plan to do that. That's supposed to really help it out. Uh, and after that, I will probably take off the stabilizer and um, call that a day for today. That was a good couple hours. Um, when I go to paint this, I'll obviously remove that, tape off the, uh, the threads there. But I'm gonna have to put a wire brush to this thing, something to get all this nastiness off. The bottom of it is really covered up. Anyways, uh, I'll bring you back when I remove the stabilizer and show you those mount marks and where that goes. And then we'll call it an end. I know this has been a long video, so uh, thanks for sticking around if you stuck around for this long and I'll bring you back here in, in a couple minutes. Take two. I don't know if that uh, my GoPro is giving me a little bit of problems. It's freezing up for some reason. But anyways, figured something out. These are nuts. So anyways, I could have easily just sat there and stuck a wrench underneath there instead of cutting the one off. Oh well. Um, this is the upper control arm got to take the uh, spring perch off and then obviously dismantle all this and take out the ball joint and then I can wire brush it and I can clean it all up uh, powder coat it and get it ready for new they sell rebuilds so you can rebuild all this and uh, and save a little money so that's the plan I'm gonna remove the stabilizer bar and then I'm gonna call that in for this video as you can tell, I'll have a lot of cleaning to do. Um, wire brush and then sanding and then acetone and blah, blah, blah. On this uh, line, I'll have to tape this line off and pull this one off and get that ready for, for paint. But other than that, the front end is getting pretty well ready for paint. Um, I might coat all this on the outside with the uh, Harbor Freight rubberized paint like I got on the, on the firewall here and then cover it with uh, Rust-Oleum uh, gloss. So uh, let me get set up to remove the stabilizer bar and then we'll call it a day and clean up. All right, hang on. All right, so the stabilizer is mounted here and here. And then obviously over to your other uh, lower control arm. So uh, I believe these are 9 16 So I'm gonna hit those, see if we can get it to drop. Time out to bring out the big guns.
wonder. That makes sense now. I already pulled that side so the uh, stabilizer bar. So now the living crap out of it. everyone I got the uh, stabilizer bar out <clears throat> so just got to remove those uh, rubber grommets that'll be ready to uh, paint that will probably go back black after I clean it um, it's too big for me to powder coat so that kind of sucks and uh, we got basically all the front end components off the the driver's side and of course we got the spring and all that off the uh, passenger side so um, I won't make a video on that it's the same over there uh, to remove so there's no need for that uh, I will have up and coming um, powder coating videos on you know the components of the front end that I want to sit there and powder coat so you will get that other than that I think we are good um, I might show a quick little video on removing all the uh, tie rod ends here, um, the steering components that way, and uh, that might make a quick little video. Anyways, thank you for watching.
please like and subscribe um, please comment you know I'm sure I probably did some stupid things and uh, you know it's like everything you kind of learn as you go um, so one key point I took out from this is don't use your uh, impact wrench on your upper control arm bolts or you can but um, put your wrench underneath there so you can sit there and uh, that might even be tight trying to get in there and get that undone but if you had a small little wrench you can get on there and uh, take them off that way anyways I might uh, do a video too on dismantling my upper control arms and uh, getting those ready for powder coating of course that would be a powder coating video there and uh, anyways done rambling on Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please comment. And uh, thanks for watching it all the way through if you did. Have a good day.